Hi guys, welcome. My name is Christina Michelle. I am a certified life coach, hypnotherapist, and vaginal steam facilitator. And today I'm doing a video on escharotic treatment and how I used it to clear HPV from my body, specifically to clear CIN3, which is an advanced form of dysplasia. So um, the reason I'm doing this video is because when I first found out that I had HPV, I was like freaking out. I was very scared. Um, I didn't know like what to do because my doctor was saying that she wanted me to have surgery um, to take care of this. And I, with everything in me, I really didn't want to do that. And so I went looking for natural ways to handle this. And there just wasn't a lot of like YouTube videos on, um, on how to treat HPV naturally. But the few that I found were like lifesavers to me. Like literally they were like, I cried. I cried one night watching one of the girl's videos. I can't remember her name, but I'll find it and I'll put it in the, um, in the like description for this. Cause you might want to go and watch hers too. But um, that's how much her message like comforted me and gave me hope. And it's because of her video that I ultimately like made the decision to, you know, go the natural route because I'm like, wow, like she did it and, and, you know, she was so beautiful and so like honest and transparent and, um, and, and I just really like felt like I connected with her. And so anyway, I want to pay it forward and I want to be that like ray of hope, like beacon of light, um, like that message bringer to you that yes, it can be super scary when you first find out that you have HPV and that it has advanced, but you also can clear it naturally and that, you, that you're going to be okay. Like the fact that you're here and you're looking for information, like it means that like this is, I believe in like divine timing. Like I don't think that anything is an accident. So like the fact that you're watching this means that like you're on the right path. Um, it's going to be okay. And hopefully I can share some information with you that is going to help you accomplish the goal of clearing HPV from your body naturally too. Okay. So um, my disclaimer, I am not a medical professional. I am not a doctor, um, like none of the things. Okay. And I do not want to um, encourage you to do anything against medical advice. Um, if you decide that you want to take the suggestions of your medical doctor, then like, that's awesome. Like more power to you. But this video is for those who are considering or looking for a natural approach to clearing this. My other disclaimer is that I don't really do videos. Um, so, you know, like, sorry for the lighting. I, I'm trying to get like as much natural light as possible, but I don't know which way the sun is moving or where it's going to be by the time we're done. So, you know, just bear with me. And I also don't even know where my camera is. I'm like, I think I'm looking at it now. Now, I, I don't know, whatever. So just stick with me um, and we're going to get through this. Okay. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about what HPV is because I'm assuming if you're here, you've already done your research and you know, but the basics are that um, it's short for human papilloma virus. And it's really, really important to know that like everybody who is sexually active, I'll say like 95% of people who are sexually active have been exposed to HPV. So it's that common. The thing is that most of the time your body will clear it naturally. If it does not clear it naturally, that's when it can progress and you can get lesions on your cervix and the um, degree of lesions or um, the amount of your cervix that's affected or covered by the lesions is categorized um, into three categories. So it's CIN1, CIN2, and CIN3. Um, when I found out that I had HPV, I was already at CIN3, um, which is like the most advanced form. If it progresses beyond that, it's, it's basically you're moving into cervical cancer. So it was of the utmost importance that like this was addressed and that it was addressed quickly. Um, the good thing is that HPV typically is a slow progressing, 
um, virus. And so if you get pap smears regularly, like your doctor is going to catch it early and, you know, is going to keep an eye on it. And, um, you know, you guys are going to be able to like handle it before it gets to the point where it's, you know, like detrimental. Um, yeah. So I, I found out just on a routine pap smear, um, and I don't know why, like my previous pap came back clear, which was like two years earlier. And, um, you know, the next one came back with HPV, um, and I had CIN3. Um, but either way, um, you know, when I found out about it, I, my doctor suggested that I have what's called the LEAP procedure. So what the LEAP is, is they go in and they, they scrape the surface of your cervix uh, to get the dysplasia off. And just nothing about that sounded good to me. I did my research on the LEAP. Well, let me back up a little bit. If you have HPV, the first step is you just gonna are gonna have abnormal cells. Your doctor most likely is going to just tell you, oh, you have abnormal cells. Like let's check back, you know, in a year and you know make sure that this hasn't progressed. There are other reasons that your pap could come back abnormal, but you know, from my research, the main reason is HPV. Um, okay, then if it does progress to CIN one. A lot of doctors will then like they'll take um, they'll do what's called a colposcopy, which they like pinch like a little piece. They take a little sample of your cervix and then they look at it under a microscope and they um, evaluate it to see if they see any like cancerous cells in it or whatever. OK, if that comes back fine, then um, a lot of them will just, you know, still do like the wait and see approach or whatever. But when it gets to CIN2 and CIN3, that's typically when they suggest that you have what's called the LEAP procedure. And that's where they scrape the dysplasia off of your cervix. So the reason why I did not want to go that route after doing my research is because, number one, um, I, I still I reserve the right <laughs> to still have children. Um, and a lot of women who had the LEAP procedure ended up um, having some complications. Um, not a ton of them, but you know, it was it's worth mentioning. Like it does happen where the the LEAP procedure is done, and then they have to go back in a few week, sorry, months, or maybe a couple years later, and do another LEAP procedure. And every time they do this, like they're scraping, you know, a layer of your cervix off. Um, some women have had to do it so many times that they ended up just getting a hysterectomy. Um, and I just, I didn't want to take that chance. Also the LEAP procedure, it can be a little bit hard on your body. Like it is a surgery. And so it requires anesthesia and for you to have some off time and, um, you know, not be super active for a few weeks. Like your doctor would advise you not to, you know, lift heavy things or, you know, be on your feet too much your body has to heal from, from surgery. And that didn't sound like anything that I wanted to do either. And so, you know, I was willing to, if I absolutely had to, but I wanted to know if there's a natural way. And thank God I found out about escharotics in my research. So let's get to, um, to the escharotic treatment. So what escharotics are is, um, it's herbs. And so, um, bromelain and I can't remember the other herbs, but it's a mixture of herbs and then I believe it's like vinegar and something else and I think calendula is used, but um, a naturopathic doctor is trained in this uh, in this treatment and they will mix the herbs and then they make like a paste out of it and then they go in and they will paint your cervix with this paste and what it does is it causes your cervix, like the surface of your cervix to react. Like it doesn't like it and it's like, ugh. And so it starts to shed, like it starts to peel. And as it does, it's peeling off like the layers of the dysplasia. Okay. So this happens over a course of time. Like you would have, you know, maybe eight to 10 treatments depending on, you know, your doctor or the, how advanced the dysplasia is. But what it does is it, it's basically the LEAP procedure, but it's, you know, over the course of several weeks and it's, it's done naturally. 
So I learned about this and um, the first doctor that I that I heard about it um, from, it was a blog by Dr. Um, Nick Leroy. I believe he's in Connecticut and he has like incredible success, like hundreds of women who have done escharotic treatment with him and they swear by him. And I was to the point where like this was so serious to me that I was willing to pack up my laptop and like go work from Connecticut for six to eight weeks, however long it would take to do this treatment with him if I had to, because I, I didn't think that anybody else could do it. But the more I researched, I found out that all naturopaths are, are um, trained in this. And then I found a naturopath here in Juneau, which is like a very small city in Alaska. So I like, it never even crossed my mind that we had someone who could do this here in my small town, but I thank God found her. Her name is Dr. Emily Kane. She is an amazing naturopathic doctor. I actually went to her just to get supplements. Um, I thought that, you know, she could help me put together a supplement plan, um, you know, tell me how much of each supplement to take. And that's why I booked an appointment with her and come to find out she was like, yeah, we could do that or we could like, you know, just do escharotics and knock this out. And I was like, holy cow. Okay. So um, it actually wasn't a or thing. Like um, she did give me supplements to take and we did the escharotic treatment. So number one thing, if you are interested in escharotics is to find a naturopathic doctor who's close to you who can do this. So um, I'll tell you a little bit about the procedure. Um, I did it for one month. I had eight sessions and we did it twice a week. Now you don't have to do it twice a week. Like we attacked mine pretty aggressively, mainly because of, um, of, of my doctor had some travel plans and she wanted to make sure that I got my last treatment before she went on her trip. So um, I, I found her in November. I did a lot of research. Um, I started gathering supplements and things like that. And then I did my first treatment with her like December 2nd or 3rd or something like that. And then um, I did my second treatment like later in the week. So um, I saw her like Monday and Thursday or something like that of each week through the month of December. That was eight total sessions. So when you go, your doctor is going to have you like lay back like you're having a pap. Um, you're going to have your legs open. Um, she's going to use a, use a speculum to hold your vaginal, you know, canal open. And then she's going to mix up the, the escharotic treatment concoction and put it probably like on a long cotton swab or, you know, Q-tip or whatever. And then she's going to basically paint your cervix with the mixture. And then um, my doctor put like a heat lamp, like right at the opening of my um, vaginal canal. And so that heat, I think it just kind of like helps, I don't know, maybe it helps like open up your cells or something. I don't know, like, or activates the herbs, whatever it does, but it's there. It's very gentle. Um, it does not hurt. Like you do have some, I don't want to say like discomfort. It's probably just to your, you know, however you experience sensations, but I did not feel like it was pain. It was more of a, like just an, a, a different experience or sensation. Like, so I, I could attribute it to like, or compare it to like, like a, like a burning, tingling kind of feeling, but definitely not pain at all. So, um, and you lay there for about 15 minutes and then, um, you know, your doctor will come back and like move the light. And um, she stuffed like a, she stuffed what's called like a vag pack up there. Um, no, not a vag pack. She would stuff like a tampon that had like um, drawing herbs on them, like up the vaginal canal. Um, and what the drawing herbs do is it helps your, um, your vagina kind of like, it, it kind of pulls like the infection down and, you know, out. So, I mean, that's the best way that I can explain it. And it, it's in support of the escharotic treatment. So you wouldn't just use these herbs by themselves. So anyway, um, she stuck the tampon in there and then I would leave it in for a few hours. I'd take it out before bedtime and I'd go on with my life. And we did this twice a week for four weeks. Um, and 
and I was pretty much done. So now here is the important thing to know about Escarotics. Um, my insurance covered it. And so I didn't have to pay anything for it. I was very, very relieved and very, very thankful for that. Um, if you don't have insurance or if your insurance doesn't cover it, then I think it runs about $150 per, um, per session, but it's well worth it. I mean, if you're looking at 150 and you need eight sessions, so that's like $1,200. Um, you know, if you can pay as you go or work some kind of plan out with your doctor or whatever, um, that would be ideal. Um, but I definitely would not let the cost um, discourage you from doing it because to me it was well well worth it to not have to go through surgery to not worry if um, you know the dysplasia was going to come back and I was going to have to do this again you know it was it was just worth it so another reason why I opted for escharotic treatment is because um, from what I understand when you do the leap it's like yeah they're gonna they're gonna get the dysplasia off they're gonna clear the clear the HPV from your body but it's basically like addressing the symptom like they're fixing the symptom they're not fixing the problem and um, and and giving your body what it needs to be healthy enough to clear it on its own. And so that's what I liked about this process is that I took so many supplements that I I just felt good and I knew that I was helping my body to get stronger and my immune system to get stronger and you know that we were working together like I felt like me and my body were a team. It's like, okay, I'm sorry that I, you know, wasn't paying attention or, you know, was like overstressed or whatever, like all the reasons that they say that HPV progresses, one of them is like stress. Um, but, you know, I just felt like this is a chance for me to learn more about myself and not feel disconnected. I felt like if I did the surgery, it was kind of like, uh, like I was putting, um, putting my, my health in like somebody else's hands. And I get that that's why we go to doctors, but this was such a, it was a much more like inclusive of me experience, you know, because I had to commit to taking the supplements every single day and, you know, treating my body better, staying more hydrated, um, like making sure that I was stressing about things less and, you know, showing up for my appointments twice a week and, you know, doing all of the things. And it just felt like, yeah, like we're doing this together, you know, not like here, like you take care of it and I hope it works kind of deal. I, I hope that that makes sense. Um, I'm not knocking the LEAP procedure at all. Um, and, and honestly, I did schedule it. I just, I scheduled it for um, December 30, 30th or 31st which was like the furthest out that I could schedule the procedure because I think I found out about this in like October. I did a whole bunch of research in November. I started Escarotics in December. Um, but my plan was I was going to give it like three months max. And whoops, sorry. And if if I felt like I wasn't going in the right direction or like this wasn't working, then I would just go ahead and go in for the procedure on December 30th. So I kept my appointment for the LEAP procedure, like kind of in my back pocket, you know, like just in case. But um, I would say after the second or third session with Dr. Kane doing the escharotics, I was like, I don't, I'm not going to need the LEAP. Like, I'm pretty sure I can cancel the appointment. Um, and, you know, I felt like we had a plan. I was confident in it. And also the good thing is, is that you can see. So um, Dr. Leroy, he, I learned this from like reading all of the reviews from his people, but his patients, but um, he will give you a picture of your cervix each session so you can see the progression. Um, my doctor, she just showed me with a mirror. So like while I was there with my legs open and, you know, my vaginal canal, like, opened up and everything. She just gave me a mirror and she's like, you know, here's your cooch and way in the back there, there's your cervix. And so I could see, like, I, I didn't, she didn't show me in the beginning because probably the first couple sessions, like I would have freaked the freak out um, at what it looked like. But by like the third or fourth or however many um, 
you know, it had started to like clear up. And so she started showing me and then I could see from session to session, like the progression. And at first it was like, I don't know, it was like, like red and yellow and blotchy. Like it just looked like wrong, you know? Um, but by the end, the last session, it was just like, it was beautiful. It was like perfectly like clear and pink and smooth and glossy and like just healthy. It was like, yes, like, yes, baby. Like, yes, that's what you're supposed to look like. So, um, so I did have the assurance that it was working because I could like see it with my own eyes. So that is something that is very encouraging as you go through the process too. Okay. So let's talk about the supplements. All right. I'm going to give you a lot of information here on supplements and I will also list it in the notes for this video. Um, I, I'm, I categorize this into three. Okay. So the first one, these are like the heavy hitters. Like if you did nothing else, like not even escharotics or like anything and you're like, I'm just going to like take these supplements for three months and see if it helps me clear this up, which I don't advise. Like if you can get escharotics, if you're at CIN, anything, one, two, or three, I highly recommend it. Um, but if for whatever reason you can or you don't, um, I would take these supplements. Okay. So, uh, and this list is based on reading pretty much every blog out there from anybody who cleared HPV on their own, plus the um, paperwork from my doctor. She gave me a list of supplements to take. So, um, okay. So here it is. So uh, what she gave me was green tea extracts, uh, DIM, D-I-M, vitamin C, folic acid, mixed natural carotenes, and vitamin E. So um, here's the green tea that I used. It's by Rainbow Foods, which is a local um, like health, health food store here. Um, the green tea, she told me to take 500 milligrams per day. So this is 400 milligrams. So I, I took like two of them. I just doubled up. You can, you can drink a bunch of green tea if you want to, but I just found it far more convenient to take it in pill form. Okay, the next heavy hitter is I3C, um, Indol 3 Carbonol. And this is basically like it's, you can use this in place of DIM. Uh, they're basically the same thing. And so I3C is, it's like broccoli and Brussels sprouts. Like it's like all green leafy and, you know, healthy vegetables condensed into like one potent pill. Um, and so I took, I think I took two or three of these every day. The next one is vitamin C. Um, the recommendation my naturopath gave me was 6,000 milligrams a day for three months and then 3,000 milligrams a day for the next three months. So for a total of six months, you're gonna take a lot of vitamin C. Now, um, these are in pill form, and I take these now that like I'm on the other side of this, and I don't need to take that much vitamin C, um, but I just feel like these were kind of big, and they're like super hard, and they were just like uncomfortable to swallow. And at 6,000 milligrams a day, I would need six of these, and so my doctor gave me a vitamin C powder and it was way easier to deal with. Like I just put it in um, water at night and I like downed it like right before I went to bed. And, you know, I just felt like that vitamin C was getting in there and it was doing all kind of good work while I was sleeping. Okay. Um, now the next, these are pretty much the same thing. They are called AHCC. My doctor didn't mention a mushroom blend, but in Dr. Leroy's book, he mentions uh, mushrooms and he talks about how a mushroom blend will take care of HPV. Um, there are hundreds of reports of women just taking AHCC or the right mushroom blend and how it cleared their HPV, even advanced, H advanced HPV, um, just with these supplements here. So um, this is Kanoko Gold. Um, by quality of life. And then this is Kanoko Platinum. It's the same mushroom blend. It's just that the platinum um, is stronger. It, and so you have to take like less pills. Um, you can take two of these a day versus with this one, you would take like four or five a day. Okay. So I ordered them from quality of life. Um, dot net or dot com or something like that. I did not get them from Amazon because I just wanted to be sure that I was getting, you know, um, authentic, 
authentic vitamins. Okay, so if you don't take any other supplements, I would definitely recommend that you take those. Okay, I would say um, the next level of supplements is going to be vitamin A, vitamin D, and vitamin E. And this is, again, based on all of the, um, all the information that I read online, and, uh, and I just you know, put together a list of what like the most people mentioned that they took. And so um, A, D, and E were mentioned by a lot of people as well as a quality multivitamin just to kind of like fill in any gaps. So those are all of the supplements. I know it sounds like a lot, but you know, it's doable. And if you think about it, you know, you're only going to be taking these supplements for a, a like three maybe six months, right? So, you know, what's a few months in like comparison to the rest of your life, right? Okay, so I have a couple of honorable mentions. Um, v steaming. So this is actually from my collection of vaginal steam herbs. Um, if you're not familiar with V steaming and you want to know more information, you can tell me and I will, you know, do another video on V steaming specifically for HPV. I'm a little hesitant to do that just because I would never put a steam plan out there for somebody, um, you know, and, and be like, this is like a one size fits all plan because I don't know like how advanced your HPV is. I don't know like anything about like the history of how you've been treating it. I don't know if you have any contraindications to steaming in general. So, um, you know, I would have to work with you one on one if you wanted a specific plan for your for your issue. Um, but, you know, if you just want general information on vaginal steaming, let me know and I'll, I'll definitely do a video. Um, but I, I be steamed three times a week with, uh, an herb blend specifically like made to, uh, to support my body in clearing HPV. Okay. Um, the other one is this PA formula and, um, it's called Hannah's herb. I got it from Hannah's herb shop.com, I think. And, um, I don't really know about this. So in my frantic research, when I first got the diagnosis, I saw this in someone's comment on a blog post. She just kind of like threw it out there and said that it helped her clear her HPV, but I don't know like if it was severe or if she had just had like abnormal cells, I don't know. Um, and then when I did order this, there were no reviews or anything on it. And so I just, I was like, okay, I was just kind of grasping at straws because I hadn't gotten a plan together or found Dr. Kane yet. And so I was ordering anything that said that it would help clear HPV at the time. Um, I say honorable mention because like, I don't want to take anything away from this. Like, obviously it helps somebody enough for them to, you know, take the time to comment on somebody's blog post about it. So I do want to give it some credit. And if you feel like, you know, you want to give it a shot, then by all means, but I mean, as you can see, the bottle's still full. I only took a couple of them and then um, and then I got my own custom plan and I ran with that. Okay, the other thing is astragalus root. And um, what I did was I just took a dropper full of this and dropped it in like a small amount of water and like just down that three to four times a day. Um, astragalus, this is a liquid herbal extract and um, it's a very good root for, it's an, it has antiviral properties and so it helps your body to clear um, viruses. Okay. The last one is Stamet 7. So I still take Stamet 7 every day just because I like taking a mushroom blend for overall immune, um, you know, support. And, um, you know, if I could find AHCC locally, I would be taking this. And I was only taking this during, um, during my treatment for the HPV because of all the reviews and I knew that like this was going to work. And so like, I, I just ordered this like probably like once a month, like I had it on order. Now that the HPV is clear, it's not like, you know, so urgent and, and I forget sometimes to like go online and place an order. So I just go up to Rainbow Foods and I grab what they have, which is the Stamon 7. And, um, you know, I, I've been happy with it, I guess. Like I, I don't know how to like rate a mushroom blend, but 
but so far so good. So, okay, so those are the supplements. Um, I, I could give you kind of like the amount of supplements that my doctor told me to take, but I would highly recommend that you find a naturopathic doctor and ask them to work with you on a plan for how many supplements or how many of each supplement to take. Do you have to take all of these? No, like probably not. Like my doctor only recommended like five or six of them. Um, let me see. She recommended the green tea, dim, vitamin C, folic acid, natural carotenes, vitamin E. Yeah, so she recommended six of them. And then I, there was a couple more that I learned about in Dr. Nick Leroy's book. Um, and so that's kind of where I got like my whole list from. But either way, what you want to do is just know that your body can do this if it has the support that it needs, right? And so you want to get started taking some kind of, you know, taking, not some kind of, you want to be intentional about the supplements you're taking. But yeah, get started taking some supplements. Okay, so um, I'm going to wrap this up. And as I do, I just want to give you some resources if you want further information, these are things that helped me. So as I mentioned, Dr. Nick Leroy's book, he has a book called Painting a Target on HPV. Oh, I wanna, I'll tell you that in a second. Okay, uh, Painting a Target on HPV, and I got it on, um, I got it on, okay. So I wanna wrap this up. And um, as I do, I'm going to leave you with some resources. Oh, one more thing. I forgot to show you the Vag Pack. I'll be right back. Okay, I went and got the Vag Pack from the fridge. So um, these, my doctor wanted me to insert into my vagina twice a week in between the escharotic treatments that I was having. Um, it says Vag Pack drawing suppositories. And uh, it says it's made of oil of bitter orange and tea tree. So I still have like a lot of these left in the fridge because I didn't, I didn't really take them. I tried a couple of them and y'all like they were so messy. Like they, they're solid right now, but it's, I think the main oil in here is coconut oil. And so when you, it gets warm, then it like melts and it just kind of, ugh, it was like oozing like out and, you know, you have to wear like a, a pad or a, a, um, panty liner or something like that. Um, I just wasn't, I wasn't with it after a couple of them and I was like, okay, I think I'm going to skip this part. Um, sorry, Dr. Kane, if you ever see this video. You know, she'll be like, girl, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't take my badge back. But yeah, I, I didn't. However, um, I did research before I decided not to use these. And Dr. Nick Leroy, in his book, he talks about the badge packs. And um, he said that he doesn't use them as part of his treatment protocol. Um, he's not against them. But he said that it's more of, you know, like he would suggest it to somebody who, who has HPV um, but it, they don't have cervical dysplasia and their doctor just has them at the wait and see point. You know, he doesn't believe in wait and see. He's like, you need to be proactive and you need to do something to help your body clear this. And so in that case, like he recommends you, you know, use a badge pack a couple times a week or whatever. So um, I didn't worry about it too much, but I, I want to give you all the information so that you can make your own decision and put together your, your treatment plan, of course, with the support of your naturopathic doctor. Okay, um, so resources, Dr. Leroy's, Nick Leroy's book, it's called Painting a Target on HPV. You can get it on Kindle, um, maybe on on Amazon. Um, I don't remember how much it was, but it was, it was inexpensive, like, I don't know, a couple dollars, maybe up to $9.99, something like that, but it was well worth it. It had a like wealth of information about HPV, more than you probably will ever want to know. There's pictures and charts and graphs and, you know, what your cervix looks like at SIN 1, SIN 2, and SIN 3, and then what it will look like when you're done treating it successfully. Um, it, it will just look healthy and pink and beautiful and so um, you can you can get those visuals in the book if you want to, but the information is very empowering and you just feel like, okay, I know what the freak is going on and you know, that just helps you feel like I can, I can do this. 
Um, another resource is acupuncture. So um, I did see an acupuncturist for a few weeks in the beginning of this process, but as I um, like grew more confidence in the escharotic treatment, then I you know stopped going to the acupuncturist. It was kind of time consuming, um, and I was paying out of pocket for for each session, and you know I was like buying all these herbs at the same time, and I was like, okay, let's let's like let's streamline some of these treatments and stuff. But um, acupuncture is a option uh, to support you in your healing. Another one is meditation. So I read about a um, a way to like visualize while you're meditating that can help you um, with your mind body connection. And I started doing this during all of my bee steams where I would just imagine my cervix and she said to call it like a pink donut, right? Like, and just be like, my cervix is a pink donut because your cervix is round and it has like a little hole in the middle and the surface of it is pink when it's healthy. And so I would just imagine, you know, a pink donut. My cervix is a pink donut. And I would just repeat that to myself over and over and just like see like my body healing and like it just made me feel good and really happy and just kept me grounded to, you know, connected with my intention for like what I'm doing and what like, you know, she's doing down there to heal. Okay. And then the last thing I would say is, um, you know, like, treat your body well. That's what this process has helped me to do. It's helped me to like, just be more, I think like just more tuned in and just more like, like, what does my body need? Like if I'm stressed out, like what do I need to stop thinking about or stop like stressing or worrying about, um, or just getting more exercise, getting active, right? Um, like drinking more water, taking the supplements, um, like cutting like drama out of your life. Like, it, it just made me, you know, it just made me treat myself better. And so um, whatever that looks like for you, I would highly suggest that you just like kick your self-care up a notch. Um, if you smoke cigarettes, I definitely would recommend that you consider quitting. Um, not that it's, it's directly tied to HPV or anything like that, but you know, the cigarettes, it's its introducing a ton of toxins into your body. And when your body is trying to heal, like you want to give it the most support and the best chance that you can. So, you know, like maybe look into like patches or gum or, you know, something else at the very least, maybe vaping. I don't, like I said, I'm not a medical professional, but like do what you can to treat your body better. Um, and then cutting back on alcohol. So my doctor did recommend that, um, actually under lifestyle changes, she put smoking cessation, eliminate alcohol consumption, um, use condoms with a new partner, um, and then diet. And with diet, it just, you know, she said to eat foods, rich, um, fr fruits and vegetables. Um, and like, that was pretty much it. Get a lot of variety of nutrients. Um, and then to eat organic if possible. So, so yeah, paying attention to your diet and, um, yeah, that's going to be helpful. So I think that's it. Um, I know this has been kind of long, but I just wanted to make sure that I covered as much as I could. Um, if you have a partner, what my doctor suggested to me was like not really to do anything different because she's like, if you've got HPV and it came from him and you clear it, she said that you are not gonna contract the same like strain of HPV again. And so like not to worry about it, but if you get a new partner, then you definitely need to like use condoms and then, you know, screen regularly to make sure that you don't contract it or a different strain again. Um, your doctor might say something different. I, I don't know. There's not a lot of research out there about what to do. And most people will tell you, most doctors will say that there is no test for HPV for men. Um, so like, don't even worry about it. But, um, you know, talk to your doctor and see what they recommend about, about your sexual activity. Um, I wanted to show you just because I'm so proud of it, my, my clear PAP results. Um, I don't know where I put them. Where did I put them? They're in here somewhere. Oh, no, that's not it. Oh, here they are. Okay. So 
Um, oh, that's the other thing. So we got done with my last escharotic treatment at the end of December. Um, and then my doctor said that we needed to wait three months for my body to just heal and, you know, to keep taking the supplements and for the cervical cells to continue turning over and doing all the things and that we would test in April. So that's what we did. Um, I tested early April and then I got my lab results and my doctor wrote at the bottom, all clear with a smiley face. So doo -doo -doo -doo. girl, this is going to be you in a little while. Okay. Um, so I'm super excited about that and I do have a follow-up test coming up, um, like next month. So you're supposed to test like six months after the initial test, just to make sure that like everything is, you know, still everything down there. Um, but yeah, so I've, I've, you know, I've been a happy camper ever since and, and I hope that you will be too. So that's it. I think I'm going to end it here. If you have any questions, you can definitely let me know. You can comment them. Um, I'll answer them to the best of my ability. But, you know, the most important thing is I just want you to know that like there's hope and that there's a way to do this. Um, I don't think that women are talking about this enough and I just don't want you to be like ashamed or embarrassed or like down on yourself. Like you didn't do anything wrong. Like you did nothing that like everybody else in the world hasn't done. You know what I mean? It's just that for whatever reason, like your body, it didn't clear this alone, but as you can see, there's a ton of supplements and there's a lot of natural, you know, resources that you have, um, to give your body what it needs to take care of it. So just know that, um, like stay away from like worst case scenario reading. Like it's, you know, uh, I will say this, that um, I was a little bit disappointed that my gynecologist was not in support of me doing the escharotics. And I understand why I know that it's not part of the standard of care. And to be part of the standard of care things have to be tested and they have to be researched and they are only going to test and research things that they can make money off of because it takes a lot of money to do the testing and the research. So when you're talking about like herbs, right? Like herbs and vitamins, like they're free basically, like they're dirt cheap. And so they're not going to spend a ton of money to research something that is going to be a free treatment right? So that's why the doctors don't know about it. That's why this will probably never become part of like the, you know, standard of care um, when it comes to Western medicine. Um, but I just, I was hoping that I, maybe my doctor, my gynecologist would be kind of open-minded and maybe like work with me, you know, and my natural path to put together a plan, but she wasn't having it. She wasn't hearing it. And, and that's okay because she acted in my best interest and, you know, doctors can literally lose their license if they advise you or support you in doing something that is, you know, experimental and not tested and, you know, and it causes you harm. So I get it. And at the same time, I'm very grateful that I found a naturopathic doctor in a natural way to do this. So like, don't, don't be upset with your doctor. Like if you go to them and you're like, Hey, I heard about escharotics and what do you think? And they're like, I don't know. And I don't care. Here's your surgery date options. You know what I mean? Like, don't get mad at them. Like they're doing their job based on their training. Um, and I'm in full support of that. Like I said, I kept my appointment just in case I needed it. Right. But, um, if you want, if you want a natural approach, you'll just need to find a natural pathic doctor. So like you get that, it makes sense. Um, anyway. Okay. So for real, for real, I'm stopping right now. Um, yeah, like God bless you. And, um, let me know if I can help you on your journey. I'm cheering for you. I'm rooting for you. Like just put on your big girl panties, get a game plan together and handle it, girl. Like you're about to have like a clear path result too. Okay. All right. Um, see ya. Bye.